Well, should we sing just a verse in a song to kind of get those two meals we've had in the last three hours out of our reception for the last few years? Let's sing. Uh, further I get to it. Let's sing Gear to the Heart of the Shepherds. Okay? I know that it's not exactly the easiest song to move or whatever, but it, it really does go well with what we're going to talk about right now. So, um, let's see, Zach, can you, can you play Gear to the Heart of the Shepherd? Sure. 221. 
little, I've had this question up here for a little bit, and I want you to think about it, and I want real answers. Don't try to think about what we might want you to say or anything like that. We don't care what you say. Uh, within reason. I'm saying, uh, well, you know what I'm saying. I, when you think really, what is it that made you one day say, man, I would love to be a seminary teacher? What made you think that? Yeah. Um, honestly, my summer teachers sucked and were terrible and that's awful. So were my EFI counselors. So I was like, I can do a better job. And then I was doing EFI counselor and I knew what to do. I was doing my own mom. But my kids still love me. They still write all the time. And then um, I, again, I, did, I was, we did early morning seminary. I think that seminary was a thing that you taught until my senior year. <laughs> Thank you for your Let's let's do this. Let's go one, two, and three. Okay. Go ahead, Al. I saw two things in the way. I know I have some talents in this area, and I love doing it. And the it was teaching the gospel. Great. Yeah. Thank um, you, Adam. So I've always loved the idea of working with youth and teaching, um, and uh, even like this in a regular high school setting in the library. <coughs> jobs and I've had eight hour days <coughs> sitting at the desk talking to nobody. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't just sit at the desk. I've got to gotta be with someone, I've got to help someone, I gotta do something. That's I probably the biggest um, reason that I'm like I really should should do some serious things about Sarah Jimmy so that I can make a difference, um, be in a career where I can help people on a daily basis. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I was listening to your answers and I was like, oh, mine sounds really like suck up after that, but I've always wanted to be a seminary teacher. I loved my seminary teachers in high school and I always wanted to do it. And, uh, and I knew that for me it was that I either wanted to like teach high school or, or teach in seminary classroom and it fit those needs of wanting to teach the gospel and spend time with the youth and, uh, interact with them and, um, so so I, I kind of lost sight of that for, for a few years after my mission because I had so many different voices of people telling me like what I should do with my life and where I should go and what would like make the most money and what would help me to be successful and, and tried out a lot of different majors and careers and different directions and, uh, and everything kept coming back to, to this and uh, um, and it's just, I know that, that even if this isn't the being the thing that I'm supposed to do for my career, Heavenly Father has something to teach me in this direction because, because this is something that I felt drawn to and led to, and, and I know that that's the Holy Ghost. So. Yeah, awesome. Let's do two more comments, okay? And then we'll do 
I just I just had to share really quick because a lot of people assume that I'm here because I'm kind of following Preston. So I just want to say that I want to be some way to show. Thank you. Yeah. No, I really do. Um, I, I first thought of it because um, I was a, a theater major before my mission. I was an actress and um, working for a theater and everything, and I really loved that. And then on my mission, it just kind of occurred to me. I was like. I don't know if I am really like making the world a better place by doing that. Nothing against people who choose to do that, but like for me, I was like, I don't know if I feel like I'm going to be like growing <coughs> eternally and like growing in the way the Lord wants me to grow by doing that. And I wasn't really sure. And I was like, well, what can make me grow? And the only thing I could think of was a seminary teacher. And I kind of went back and forth on it for a little while when I came home. But then like as soon as I started pursuing it, I was like, yeah, this is this is good. So hopefully it turns out. But it's funny because. Um, the very first time that I like verbalized it out loud that like I'm kind of thinking of maybe being a seminary teacher it was on my first date with Preston and he was like wait me too. So it was a common goal that we had. That's <laughs> wonderful. I just want to add a disclaimer that it was not out of the It's true that I did this, but it was just like I was obsessed with teenagers. I was a teenager when I was a teenager. When I was a senior, all my best friends were freshmen because I was bullied throughout my entire life and I just wanted to make things better for other people. If what was not awesome, so I wanted to like make things better for other kids. Seminary, it got canceled for six months one time because the bishop said we weren't going to have it until people were reading the scriptures again. Okay, like it was just it was a disaster. <laughs> you guys don't understand. Seminary was a disaster for me growing up, and um, but like so I, I it sucked because then I hear about people. Oh, I loved it. Like I felt so spiritual. I go to BYU and I'm like, oh, is this what it's supposed to be like? Like this is incredible. Like I I love teenagers. It's it's what I wanted to do something that I could be a bike counselor all year all year round. And that didn't exist. So I thought that that was shot in the dark, so I came to do graphic design. But um, I but it was because there was just some sure guy experiences that I was like, I don't want anyone to ever have to go through this again because this can be so much better. And I love the program, everything's like like with the doctrinal mastery. When I was I was talking to my friends and I was like you know what, when I do scripture mastery, I want to teach it more like, how can I apply this in my life? Because memorizing scriptures never did anything for me. I, I, it, w it was like emphasizing classes sometimes in seminary, but it didn't make sense. But then I got to my mission, and I was like, wow, these are used all the time. Like, if I just memorized this, my life would have been so much easier. Like, these are so great, because I can apply it in this, this, this way. And then Dr. Master came, and I was like, weird, the whole point of the mastery is to teach you how to apply the doctrine. And I was like, I am made for this. Like, this is the perfect time, this is what I want. This, I was just going to say that it, your comment didn't need a disclaimer either because if you remember the, the story, remember Elder Scott telling the story about going to the two different Sunday school classes, one in Mexico, one in his home ward? Yeah. If you remember, the really profound <coughs> experience he had wasn't in the class with the good teacher. It was in the class with the really bad teacher. That's where he had all those sacred experiences. He learned from the negative example that he saw there, and I, I, I've had some really wonderful teachers, and I've had some teachers that they weren't very good at all, and I learned from both of them, positive and negative examples. So that's not that unusual, really. Thank you. So we've been doing this now for a little while, and not one time have I ever asked this question and had someone say. I want to take role. <laughs> I just, so I went and I sat on a park bench and I thought, what am I good at? <laughs> and role. I, I am so good at marking a role. I need to find something that will allow me to mark a role every day. And I love calling parents disengaged parents. <laughs> You're not very interested in their children. Seminary teaching, right? So the thing is, the reason why I bring that up, and the reason why I'm going to start talking about administrating appropriately in that way, is that most of you, this isn't what drew you to this profession, the administrative part of being a seminary teacher. Um, but every job has part of the job that you may not even like to do. Brother Robin shared one time, I heard him say, can you imagine a pilot saying, I love to be in the air flying. Taking off and landing, ugh. 
What would you say to a pilot who said that? Get up there first. Yeah, I mean, okay, that's this great. You important. might not want to be a pilot. <laughs> it's scared to be with him when he flew. Right. Yeah. What about a, a construction worker who said, you know, yeah, man, I love building houses. I just fill in the blank, Brian. Here, what's your man? What, what's something that a construction guy might not like doing? I just really don't like how I have to work with wood. <laughs> I hate him or anything. Foreign concrete. Okay. Foreign concrete. Yeah. I so, hate following the plans. Like it's just, there's just, I'll just build it. Yeah. And see, so we would just say to people sometimes in other professions, well, then you might not want to do that because that's a big part of the job. Yet sometimes in, there's people in seminary and institutes who will say, I just got in this to teach. Well, I'm sorry to tell you this, but teaching is only part of the job. And the other part of the job is really, really important, essential part of the job. Not just like, okay, I'll, I'll do what you need me to do, but you have to do well what we're going to ask you to do in the next little bit. And most of 471 and everything else leading up to this was all teaching. And we wanted to identify people who can teach. And we feel like we found people who can teach. But I can honestly tell you, if you cannot be a good administrator, you will never be a full-time seminary. <coughs> if you drop this ball, it's going to we would be very reluctant to hire you. Does that make sense? <coughs> And so you might think, well, how, how do you observe that? Like, how do you, you know, are we in the back going, he uses a pencil for his role? You know, <laughs> that's not, but we have ways of knowing. Principles, see, to us, we still observe a lot of teaching. Your principles, it becomes a headache to a principal to have someone on their faculty who's a bad administrator who doesn't follow up on absences or even take role. Um, principals also fill out evaluations, support specialists are talked to. How We want to make sure that the people we're hiring in, in seminaries and institutes are good administrators, because it's, it's important. Now, with that being said, I hope that that's not your only motivation to do administrative work as well. And so I wanted to, will you turn with me to Luke chapter 15? So sometimes because this isn't your like most natural, oh, I'm so excited to administrate. Sometimes it, it takes a little bit of motivation, you know, to do those things and say, yeah, I want to be a good administrator. And I see the need to be a good administrator. So there's... In Luke chapter 15, um, as you know, there's three parables. Uh, could anyone tell me who the, what they are? Caesar. Okay. The parable of what? Lost coin. Lost coin. And tell me what happens in that parable. Okay, they search the whole house, they sweep it. When they find it, find that verse, what does it say happens when they find it? Calls her friends and neighbors. Okay, calls her friends and neighbors. I found my coin. Right? They rejoice. I, I skipped one. Tell me about the parable of the sheep. Okay, so if a sheep strays, right, goes off, then they go. And what happens when they find it? It takes on his shoulders and what? what? Rejoice. Okay. Tell me about the prodigal. Okay, the son leaves. Okay, wastes everything. Gets to the point where he's staring at pigs, envying them. Has this moment. What's the beautiful line in there? 
and he came to himself in verse 17 and says, I will arise and go back to my father. And so he goes back to his father, and what is his, how does his father react? He runs to him. He falls on his shoulders, throws him apart. And so, so in each case, now tell me what we can learn from this. Um, how does a coin get lost? Neglect. Neglect. <laughs> Coins don't run off. Sometimes we feel that way, don't we? <laughs> Oops, just wait till you have kids. You'll swear that inanimate objects have, have actually become alive and moved. How do sheep get lost? <laughs> what is right behind the other? How did three legged sheep get lost? Um, I mean, really, do you think that there's sheep that are like, forget you guys back? You know, like, uh, how do sheep get lost? Tell me, like, most sheep that stray from the forest, how do you expect they get lost? So I work with sheep and goats, and sheep are really dumb. And goats are really smart. <laughs> so, so, so they get distracted. This might actually fit where I'm going. <laughs> a lot of times it's funny, I work the sheep to it, and as they're wandering off, they're wandering from grass patch to grass patch, and they never lift their head. Um, they see where they're going. They just go where the food is, and then all of a sudden, what happens? They can't see where they're going. They wake up, okay. Yeah. Okay, how did the prodigal son get lost? He's tempted by the way. Yeah. He, he saw a great grass patch out there. Okay. So he just completely... See, the sheep was not necessarily rebelling. <coughs> he was just head down, eating grass. Okay, so, so I want you to tell me then, if we were to take our lost students and put them... Tell me what a coin student would be like. What, tell me about a coin, a lost coin student. I would say it's somebody who's, <coughs> whose parents have neglected to teach them the way, or like their leaders at church maybe feel unwanted or something like that. It's like through no fault of, of their own, they just don't really know where to go or what to do. Yeah. Lost. Lost. Okay, so that, if you have a lost coin student, Tell me some things that might not be as effective as you reach out to them. Yeah? I'm giving them a lecture about their testimony. Awesome. The preaching to them. Good. Preaching to them? Yeah. Awesome. Tell me, you said something about <coughs> this neglect that's caused them. So tell me about a call home to a lost coin parent sometimes. How effective? Not very you know, you call and I. How many, some of you have been teaching for a semester. Have you had this call? I'm a little worried about Billy. He's not been coming to seminary. Well, you know, I don't care whether he comes or not. But I'll tell him either get seminary out of his schedule or start coming. It's like, oh, could you not talk to him? <laughs> 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 that would be, never mind. <laughs> wrong, wrong student, right? Billy. <laughs> so, okay, so tell me then about uh, a sheep. Tell me what a sheep student is like. A lost sheep student. Some parents will tell their kids, for example, like, we'll take seminary fourth period, and then baseball, there's something special about baseball players. We're a weird bunch anyway. But then um, baseball, you know, because of the light during that time of year, they have to start their games right at 3 or 4 o'clock. So they take seminary fourth period, and uh, then they miss seminary a lot. Right? How many of you have had that if you've taught a fourth period? Okay. 
or no. Okay. It was that guy. Yeah. So we knew that. Um, <laughs> 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 so, so a lot. She, it, now you wouldn't look at those students and go. I, I don't even think they'd feel like they're doing anything wrong. Does that make sense? They just have their head down eating grass and look up all of a sudden and think, oh, man, I haven't done that. Okay, tell me about a prodigal son student. Yeah? I think it depends on the part of the prodigal son student that I forget is that he wanted to take this fortune and leave. Like, so he had this idea in his head. Somehow he got this idea in his head that he could make his fortune someplace else. Like, whereas this, the other brother, like, he stayed. That, like, that's how we Way with your lesson. I'm not going anyway. So. <laughs> um, no, so I just, so just because I haven't been able to make it to the Tuesday trains, I've been watching all the YouTube videos. And Brother Millet, I just got, I just finished the one where he goes over this, and he, he brought up how you know, Elder Holland said this should be the parable of, of the elder son and the other son, and how that son's here with the coin from neglect, the sheep from wandering, but the other son who has no idea that he's even lost. And, um, and I think I'm that way in many, many instances where it's uh, you're stubborn. You don't think that you need to change. Um, and so to me, when I think of a student who's that way, it's kind of like, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing everything I need to. Why, why should I change? When yet in reality, you need to recognize that you want to change. Anyway, that's how I can relate to it. Thank you for that. That's great. So, so some of the other sons might actually be in our class looking around going, these idiots don't even come. Yeah. You know, and they don't even realize that they're they're lost. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the is someone who So tell me about the prodigal son's parents. Good parents watched. So, and yeah, what were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, I was thinking a great example is Alma the younger, his parents. You know, he was a prodigal son. For I think in high school sometimes, maybe a kid in high school may be trying on purpose a new group of friends that isn't isn't good and is trying out those things. It's going kind of like the prodigal son full speed opposite direction. But I think like the parents of Alma the Younger, we also need to just keep praying. And maybe, I don't know, our, the, our prayers and the parents' prayers that help them come back. So you have a kid who, do you notice how all the behaviors are the same? I mean, all the results, I'm sorry. They're all three lost. So you have a student in your class that's not coming, not engaging, not whatever. Do you just look at them and go, okay. See the behavior, what you see is kind of the same from all three, maybe. How will you know then? Would you react differently to a coin student than you would to a sheep student than you would to a prodigal? So how do you know which one they are? Would you teach a little differently if you knew you had a kid that was neglected? Would you teach him a little differently? Or maybe in your individual interactions with him, would you treat him a little bit different? Mm -hmm. What about a, a kid who just, man, other things have become really important to him in his life? A good kid, really good kid, but just kind of all of a sudden got up from eating grass and realized he was far away from 
where he wanted to be. Would you, would you deal a little differently with that, that kid? Or what about the kid, awesome parents, mom at home crying, <coughs> wetting her pillow by day and by night, praying for this kid, fasting for this kid, doing everything they can for this kid, and you know that, and the kid's just rebelling against his parents and everything else. Would you treat this kid maybe a little different than you would this kid? I'm not saying treat him like quality of niceness or anything, but would you would you approach it with it? So how do you know which one they are? You get to know. You are a good administrator. Does that make sense? <coughs> You're a good administrator. Well, I just have a question. Um, Somebody's not like retired or anything. So when there are these like representatives, or whatever, it's kind of a big deal that they're even Oh, but they will sign up third period right after lunch. But I mean, like, but they don't, but they don't have to anyway. So, like, if they did, if they really were against the church, they could just not take the class, right? Yeah. Is that the thing? Yeah. Okay. But so would we still go try to get them? No, no, no. I, but yeah. we wouldn't know they existed if they weren't in their class. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, like, but the fact that they're, but they're willing to do what their parents say to show up is still a big deal. Right? Yeah. Because it's if, not required. If that's really why it's required. Yeah, if that's as kind-hearted as they are, you know, I'm willing to do what mom and dad say, but some of them, who we love deeply, say, I'm going to take a third period and then stay a third period. And seminary is a very convenient class to have, especially <laughs> if there's a teacher that doesn't, doesn't even call home, time, so. that doesn't even send an email. That it becomes, you could have a whole semester of free fun School doesn't care, graduation's not affected, mom and dad don't even know, I could be off doing whatever. I had a, a parent call me one time and say, Brother Martin, I was the principal, Brother Martin, I am so sorry. You have probably been wondering what's going on with our son. I wasn't the son's teacher. Our family left at Thanksgiving <coughs> And we took our kids down to South America, and we've been building homes between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we got all the schoolwork, we got everything. We got down there and realized we didn't talk to the seminary. And I am so sorry. What do you have, what do they have to do to make it up? I was like, oh, well, let me see how many, that's great. How was Mexico, you know, that, that's awesome. And uh, we started to look up how many absences the kid had. Guess how many he had? Zero, Zero absences. And I said, I'm sorry, I think I have the wrong kid. What, what did you say their name was? I don't show that they are absent. Mm -hmm. So I went to the teacher, and he's like, oh, I think they've been here. <laughs> oh. So we had a talk. But, <laughs> um, but here's the deal. Like, in that case, he was off with wonderful parents doing a service project. What if he was off with a girlfriend? Not doing a service project. <laughs> Does that make sense? And so, so, being a good administrator is so very, very important. And we want to be able to know how to approach these kids. So. So I want to talk through for a second. You call home and you have one of those, well, I didn't even know, I didn't even want them to take seminary. I don't even know why they took it. Or something in the phone call, you start to realize these parents, they aren't, I mean, they aren't doing anything to help their kid or encourage their kid in seminary. So that's you. What would an administrator, a good administrator, do at this point? Give me some ideas of things you could do. I would probably first start with a prayer, probably kneeling prayer, um, and then try to contact the young men's president of their ward or the bishop. Um, yeah, and go from there. Yeah. So a bishop gets an email. <coughs> you know, so and so's enrolled in my class, and they really seem to be struggling. They're not coming. Is there going to be any bishop that goes, yeah, I told them, you know. <laughs> okay. It's rare. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. 
Sometimes it's more effective. And you could talk to the bishop and say, is there anyone in the ward that might, or, or maybe even invite a bishop. You know, I don't know if you have time during ward council, but is there someone who might be able to approach this this kid and encourage him to attend seminary because I don't feel like he's getting much of that at home after I talk to his parents. I'm telling you, I'm serving as a bishop right now. If I got a call like that from a seminary teacher, what would I know about that seminary teacher? He cares about my, my work member. Like he really cares. Or she really cares. And so, so you would approach this a little bit differently. Tell me how you might approach one of the lost sheep. I approached one. They weren't stupid. Um, but uh, I had a, You I said had a, they weren't stupid? They weren't stupid. Oh, I thought you said they went stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I was back to ways low. Yeah. I guess that, <laughs> I I guess that could play. happen. They, <laughs> they just played dead on me. Um, no, so. But I, I talked to her mom, and, and she was just busy, and had a lot of things going, and me and another, or another teacher, we went, got up, like, the mom was really nice about it, but at the same time, she wasn't, like, getting yeah, pushing super hard, she'd just been missing, she'd been working a lot, and we went over to her house, and uh, we both, there was another summer teacher and I, and we visited her, we had a great conversation, and um, I don't know, I just think that's generally a really good, so, someone who's, who knows the gospel's true, but just hasn't been prioritizing it very much. I think she knows. Like, I took her old seminary teacher. I didn't even know her very well because I never seen her. Day, but I took her old seminary teacher that knew her, and I think we, I, she came to class twice. But. You know, this is one This is one that's really close to my heart because this was me. I mean, my life. Um, I played a lot of sports. Uh, my parents were encouraging, but not... seminary was nice. When I was a freshman, I got kicked out of seminary, and in all honesty, it wasn't for anything I had done, per se. I was I was probably a little rascally, but more playfully than anything. I don't think I was a bad kid, or, you know, but my brother, Sean, I was sleeping one day on the desk. It was at 6, you know, 15 in the morning. My brother, Sean, decided he was going to throw a Book of Mormon in my head. <laughs> And uh, so he was waiting for Sister <coughs> Shay to turn around, and when she did, he did that right as Michelle Madrid sat up from uh, writing something, and he hit Michelle Madrid right in the face with this book of Mormon. <coughs> Knocked off her glasses. My brother and Sue was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then he hit Chad in the face. <laughs> <laughs> we still got enough about that. Anyway, <laughs> um, and Sister Shay said, Chad and Sean, please leave. And we were like, <clears throat> we went and then we got to the door and she said, um, no, take your stuff. But I'd rather you not come back. And I was like, you know, my brother gave a speech to the door. Oh, so sorry. You know, so please don't do this to us. Don't make us endure your horrible lessons at 6.15 in the morning. Like, my brother was kind of an interesting, wonderful person. Now he's awesome and active and wonderful. And a Marine. Um, but, but, uh, but we walked out. And uh, my senior year, I didn't go to seminary. My, that was my sophomore year. My, my junior year, I didn't go one day. My senior year, it was the fireside. Sunday night fireside before they had this seminary fireside that they would invite everyone to. And uh, Brother Theriot, a teacher, came up to me and, at church and said, hey, Shad, uh, are you coming to the seminary fireside tonight? And I said, uh, no, I got kicked out of seminary. And he said, who kicked you out of seminary, Sister Shay? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he said, well, I've never kicked you out of seminary. I've been called to teach this year, the older class, and I would love you to be in my class. And I said, ah, I don't know. I haven't gone. I'm not going to graduate. I have baseball and basketball and stuff. And gave him all the excuses. And he said this to me. I remember he said, Chad, I really need a leader in my class. I need 
need someone like you in that class. Will you please come? And it's like, I don't know. I mean, honestly, and he said, please just come to the fireside tonight. That's all I'm asking. Come to the fireside. We're going to talk about seminary. I'll ask you after if you want to take it or not. And then he didn't ask me after. He walked up with, like, the whole folder and everything, and, like, so excited to have me in the class, and didn't give me a choice. <laughs> I, like, had to break his heart or say yes, and I was like, okay, yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, I went the whole first semester, and then he was called as the state government's president and released as a seminary teacher. I am telling you, this is the 100% truth. I actually had the thought in my head, and, and then they combined the classes again, and Sister Shea was still a teacher. I had the thought in my head, if she calls me, I will go. I had a great experience that first semester of my senior year. If she calls me and says, hey, Shad, why aren't you coming? I will go. She never called. She never called one time. I never went. Sheldon, who taught this morning, never went to seminary again. And we went, and I graduated an inactive young man going to play college baseball without any plans to serve a mission. That's not the direction I was headed for a semester. I'm telling you that. I was starting to have some feelings about the church and some other things that would later come back and make a big difference in my life, kind of be brought to my remembrance. But, but uh, she never called. And she's apologized since, so I don't mean to throw her under the bus or anything like that. She's a great lady, and I would call me a punk soft. Um, but I'm telling you, I wasn't this guy, and I, I didn't have neglectful parents. I, could, I, I just kind of let other things become too important, and, and I, I would have come if someone would have, would have called to me. I really would have. And so I think our sheep are kind of like that. They don't even know they've been absent nine times to play baseball, unless the teacher tells them, hey, I know you're missing because of baseball. Can you do this and this and this? We need to kick you know, keep you up to date, or, you know, so you can get credit, and so you can learn this stuff, your mission, uh, they won't even feel like they're doing anything wrong unless someone talks to them and says, hey, you need to do something. So, like, yeah, can I just add, like, just, like, a 10-second story to yours as well, because I was the same way, and I wouldn't consider myself, and my parents were very, my parents were very strong, I'm sure my whole family is, but for me, it was the same kind of thing where it was like soccer be fourth period and I'd leave, go play soccer in this seminary or lunch, you know, third period kind of thing. And I didn't realize what was going on until Brother Wetzel pointed it out to me. And he pulled me aside and said the same thing. He said, Mike, like we need, we need a leader in this class. And when you stay at lunch an extra 45 minutes and think that that's okay, and I didn't think that it was wrong. You know, to me, I had the mindset of, oh, it's just seminary. Like, we're okay, I'll come in. I'm still contributing. It's a choice, you know. I was still choosing to go later. But when he finally called me out on it, and he didn't do it in a mean way, he did it you know, privately with me, and, and that's when it kind of hit me as well. That's when I was finally able to, to look up and see how far I wandered from chewing on the grass way over here. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Okay, and then we have our, our prodigals, where we work with parents and priesthood leaders. Um, I've written them notes to be delivered to them at school because I knew they were going to their school classes. Um, just like we bought these cards at Maple Mountain and we had a, a whole thing of first vision cards where it just had the picture of Joseph, you know, on the front. And we used those to write to kids and just say, hey, I, we miss you in seminary. I, I hope everything's going okay in your life. And, um, we've just really missed you here and hope you'll stop by. And, come to class. Now, that's not the first approach. I'd already called parents, called, you know, I knew where they were and everything else. I just, but you still try to reach out to them and hope they have a moment where they come to themselves. But to extend that arm the whole semester long, you know, trying to get them to come. And so, I love these <clears throat> this chapter and these parables because in every case there's a great celebration in someone's family. And what a blessing. Don't think of administrative work as paperwork. Think of it as missionary work. 
the administrative part of your job is going after those who, who aren't coming or who aren't completing and trying to bring them back into the class. Do you believe that seminary really does bless someone's life? How many of you think that your life would have been a lot different throughout high school if you wouldn't have had the influence of the seminary? I know it's not for everybody, but generally speaking, if you really believe that, try to get them there. And try to get them there by administrating appropriately. Okay, this is a, Elder Ballard said this. Eric, would you mind taking that in your best Elder Ballard voice? Okay. Brethren, today we are fighting a battle that in many ways is more perilous, more fraught with danger than the battle between the Nephites and the Lamanites. Our enemy is cunning and resourceful. We fight against Lucifer, the father of all lies, the enemy of all that is good and right and holy. These are perilous times. We battle literally for the souls of men. The enemy is unforgiving and relentless. He is taking eternal prisoners at an alarming rate. And he shows no sign of letting up. While we are profoundly grateful for the many members of the church who are going who are doing great things in the battle for truth and right, I must honestly tell you it is still not enough. We need much more help. And so as the people of Ammon looked to their sons for reinforcement in the war against the Lamanites, we look to you, my young brethren of the Iranian priesthood. We need you. So this is in the Raising the Bar talk. You made me recognize that. But I guess when I read this, I, this last little bit, you know, we look to you for reinforcement in the war against the We look to you, and I would just put here seminary teachers. Bishops, whoever, but for our purposes today, we look to you, seminary teachers. We need you. We need you to battle for the souls of these young people. Um, fight for it. Yeah, they're going to be rough sometimes. Yes, sometimes it'll be embarrassing as you try to reach out to a kid, they respond poorly, you know? Yes, some parents are going to say, you know what, this is the least of my worries right now. Yes, some bishops won't be as responsive as we want them to be. Yeah, there's all these things, but we just don't stop fighting. And if you only teach those who come to your class consistently every day without much administration, you're leaving out some of those who need seminary the most. So fight to get them there. Um, this is another one. I love this. Now, it came to pass that when they had surrendered themselves up unto us, behold, I numbered those young men who had fought with me, fearing lest there were any, many of them slain. But behold, to my great joy, there had not one soul of them fallen to the earth, and they had, and they had fought as if with the strength of God, yea, never were men known to have fought with such miraculous strength. And with mighty power did they fall upon the Lamanites, and they did frighten them, and for this cause, it would be nice to deliver themselves up as prisoners of war. I just love this. Be this kind of a leader. He had his young men, you know, these scripling warriors, and he numbered every one of them. Uh, I think that goes along well with the, with the Elder Ballard quote. Do you know who's there every day? Do you know who wasn't there the last couple times? Um, have you reached out to them? If their parents are unresponsive, have you reached out to the bishop? Have you gone to former teachers and asked what they know? Have you reached out to the bishop and asked for a young men's president or a young women's president to, to talk to? Have you sent them a card over to the school? Have you done everything you can so that at the end of a semester, um, you can say, I did everything I could to help that kid. Heavenly Father, please, please help them. That's what we should be able to say. It's easy if you're not very calculated and careful for this to fall by the wayside as you're planning lessons and as you're doing all those things for, for these. And sometimes you'll get these kids there and then you'll wish they weren't. <laughs> you'll get there and you'll be like, oh, 
why did I fight so hard for this game? Because there was one ship perish, so then a whole bunch. Okay, and so, so, but I know this is a sacred work to do, and so I want to give you some tools to do it. Okay, first we prepared this this worksheet for you to go through with your principal. It's just simple things. I know how to mark daily attendance. There's a computer program you'll use to do that. Have them, the support specialist, by the way, might even be more helpful in some cases than the principal of this. How to find the phone number of a student's parent. How to find the phone number or email of a student's bishop. How to send the following emails, absence, tardy, announcements. How to do the following, enter grades, excuse absences, excuse tardies, enter schedule details to keep track of what you teach each day. That one, even your principals might not be familiar with. It just in some cases in my experience. Um, I had one call me last year like, what are you talking about? Every day you can enter in what you taught that day. Matthew 1 and 2. Why might that be important to administrate appropriately? You have multiple classes, you can get mixed up. <coughs> and also, what what about when we start asking them to do makeup work? Yeah. It's good to be able to um, hand them a print off. You know this is exactly what I used to do. Yeah. 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 I used to take the study manual, print off Matthew 1 and 2, and write a note. You know, Jacob, you've missed too many classes. Here's one of the assignments that, uh, that you missed that you'll need to make up in order to receive credit. And... Uh, hand it to them in class. When you complete this and bring it back to them. Um, do those things. Help them have an experience with the scriptures that they miss. Um, how to print out the following reports. And it gives you about six reports there that will be helpful. You can print off a report saying who needs makeup work, picture roll, birthday lists, excessive absences, um, excessive tardies, unexcused absences. You could do all that and, and once you know how to access all those, and so you can be a good administrator if you know how to do it. So sit down with your support specialist, take notes, keep this in your office so that you know how to do this and use these periodically. Okay. Um, uh, at our first Tuesday meeting, we'd like you to report that you've done this or shoot us an email. Okay, don't let this just get tucked away somewhere. This is an important part of your job. Just make sure you know how to do everything. Some of you who've been teaching for a semester, this will be pretty easy for you if you've already learned it, but, but please, please do this, okay? Just um, a few cautions that I would give with administrating. Try to fill your roles. Do not try to clean up your roles. get the difference between those two. I had a teacher one time actually come to me, and I'm not kidding, he said these words exactly. Hey, I have a goal of 100% completion, and there's no way this student, like, can we transfer into another class? <laughs> I won't be able to meet my goal. That, I'm not kidding. I was like, well, <laughs> the goal is not just to get 100% of kids that will complete in your class. Your goal is to help 100% of the kids complete, you know. And so don't have this thing, oh, if I could just get this kid out of my class, I wouldn't have to make so many calls. That'd be like dropping an investigator because you're on 100% math. Because you're yeah. like, they're not potential math. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you might have this, you might have this, uh, this temptation to want to clean things up and you know your goal and not only that um, I, I had another student who was in my ward come in and say brother so-and-so told me that if I would go home and do this he would give me nine makeups and that this was like not very much maybe an hour and a half of work but if I would go home and do this and then come and report in class, he would, he would wipe away all my absences. Uh, that kid got credit, but that cleaned up a role. It didn't necessarily meet the objective. 
for some reasons. So don't have that be your, your objective. Um, Elder Callister, I love what he said. Uh, Jose, would you read that first one? Yes. There were no ulterior motives or hidden agendas in the Savior's ministry. And love, unrestrained, and freely given. Cassie, would you take that next one? As naturally and regularly as we seek air, he sought to bless. I just love those two quotes about him. Um, when you're doing makeup work and these things, what should be your motive? To help them. To help them. Love. <coughs> not, not anything personal. When we start getting into personal things, just like, you know when missionaries had goals? Uh, to teach a certain number of discussions, and it was about them as to the investigators. Do you remember yeah. those things? There's one missionary that one time uh, the bishop president sent us to see how they're teaching so many discussions. They were teaching about 70 discussions a week, and it was just blowing out. And go, go see what they're doing down there. And <laughs> the missionary knocked on the door. Would you be interested in hearing a message about God, the Eternal Father, and how He sent His Son Jesus Christ to to die for us? And, uh, no, thank you. Are you sure? Because we'd love to tell you about how God has called prophets in our day and how he called the prophet Joseph Smith and, and told him about the Book of Mormon. And we have Latter-day Scripture, and we can, we can read that Latter-day Scripture, we can pray about it, we can know that it's true. Are you sure you don't want to share that message with you? Yeah, I'm sure. Discussion. <laughs> Covered the whole discussion. And yeah, that's discussions and things like that, but, but okay, and that maybe isn't even a bad <coughs> approach, right? But the motive wasn't necessarily, I guess I can't judge their motives, but sometimes if we get too focused on ourselves and trying to accomplish these things for ourselves, the Savior never did that. He, he just loved us and tried to and, and bless people around. Because naturally, as we see air, that's what he did. Um, there's the story of President Monson, um, you know, going into the the pit um, and getting that little Castro boy. Do you guys remember that? He, he was working in the in the oil pit and, oh. as a car mechanic, and, and President Monson. This is when he was a bishop. You know, he went and he found the. The, the young man, and he saw his eyes peeking up through, he's covered in grease, and he saw these two white eyes, and, and left church to go find him, and brought him up, and and, uh, and then, this is in President Monson's, the video about his life, that man, it showed him and all of his family, and he had served as a bishop twice, and, you know, and, and when you see, sometimes when we're in these shoes, he's not thinking he's making a big difference. Reaching out to one little Brother Castro could affect generations if you'll do it. And it's important, like knocking doors on a mission, it's important to continue to reach out and reach out because what if it's the next door, the next call, the next whatever that makes a difference in a kid's life? You may not get all of them, but you will get some of them. And so, so that's a that's great. But the last little thing, and I, I hope this works just an idea of something that you can do. Um, screencasts that capture your screen. And here's a few things I did when I was thinking just to uh, to try to help those students who weren't there. So.
sorry I missed you in class today. Those students who might be watching this and for the parents who received this email and are watching this, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about what we talked about today. Today we talked about the great sermon that Nephi gave in 2 Nephi chapter 4. It's often called the <coughs> Song of Nephi. And uh, in this, this wonderful psalm, you'll remember Nephi, uh, his father has just passed away, and, and he starts to talk about things that he delights in and things that make his soul sorrow. And uh, that's what we covered a lot today. Uh, one of the things that his soul delighted in, he says, was the scriptures in these verses that you see here. And today we discussed these questions in class. You might want to read this verse with your son or daughter or, or uh, child and, and discuss these questions. Uh, what are some things we might do if our souls delight in the scriptures? What does it mean to you to delight in the things of the Lord? Nephi said that his heart pondered the things he had seen and heard. What does this mean to you? We had a great discussion about this in class today, and I think it would be a wonderful thing to talk about together. Uh, also, we talked about some of the things that made Nephi sorrow. He said in these verses, O oh, wretched man that I am, and he was sad because of his weakness of flesh and sins that so easily beset him. And we talked about what those things meant and why Nephi might be feeling that way. Um, and, and then we talked about this question. What are some examples of difficulties that can beset us, <coughs> that surround us and press on us from all sides? That might be a wonderful discussion as well to have uh, together so that your, uh, your son or daughter has an opportunity to discuss these chapters as well since they missed class today. Uh, I love these chapters. And uh, we actually went all the way through from chapter 4 to chapter 8 today. And, um, and so we encourage you, I've sent along the link uh, to the student study guide with this email. And we encourage you to have your son or daughter go back and, and spend an hour uh, reading those chapters and doing some of the activities in the study guide and bring those in to us so that they uh, <coughs> receive credit for the day. Uh, but I love this song of Nephi and Noah will bless us and help us as we read it and apply it to grow closer to the Lord. And we hope to, to see your son or daughter next time in class. If there's anything we could do to help out there, please let us know. And if there's anything going on we should be aware of, um, we, we would love to know and hope all is well. Take care. So that's just an example. It really takes, that was how long. It had to be less than five minutes because Jane only lets you go five minutes for free. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, you really put a price in this <laughs> But really, all I did was sit down with, um, with my PowerPoint. You could probably tell that wasn't like some, I felt, you know, but I, what, what would be my motive in doing that? Can I get him to come to class? Can you try to get him to come? Awesome. What's that? Just beat their interest in the scripture. Yeah, good. Help them know that they're missed and that they know they're needed here. Yeah. Yeah. So is the focus on them completing seminary? Or is it on learning the great things that are in 2 Nephi 4 through 8? Yeah. And so if you do something like this every day, even when they don't need makeup work, it kind of gives that sense that we miss you and you know you missed out. Yeah. <coughs> I did it uh, so I didn't have time to make it personal because as a full time teacher you have you know 15, 16 kids absent a day, right? But. So all, the reason why I use this Jing is it's just a link. So all I need to do is send a link, and through WISE, there's an email that 
where you can email everyone that was absent that day. And I would just say, you know, Mr. Son and Daughter, please watch this quick screencast and it'll explain what we did today. Do you email know the kids personally or is it always the parents? It's always the parents. Yeah. I would usually wait till after because every now and then I would include something like, you know, someone shared in class today this comment. It was, it was really just a powerful moment in class. And I would just almost give like the sports center version of class. <laughs> like that's kind of what, what was in my mind when I started. It's like, hey, I'll give them the highlights of class and tell them what they missed and, and show them what's going on. Have you seen much for your Yeah. Yeah. I, especially with the prodigal son parents and um, where they really want their kid, like they would sit down and have these discussions with their kids. And it also, the reason why I did that is I, I thought, well, they're missing out on discussion in class. If they're going to have it with their parents, that would be a positive thing, you know? And, and it, I felt like it tried to connect parents. To, and I felt like I was helping the parents, which is our role. So for the office and practice. So, my time's tight, uh, got a lot of absences. Could I send a paragraph email? <coughs> Here's the lesson, we missed your son or daughter. Please review these verses and answer this question. Absolutely. See that? It, you know, that's, for Brother Martin, this is a no-brainer. This, this would require a PhD and 10 more years of training for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm okay to sending a simple little email with a cute little floaty balloon on it or something, you know, something that catches their attention, a smiley face, is, you know, whatever. You say, sure missed you in class today. We reviewed 2 Nephi chapter 4. Could you review these, these verses and look for the answers to these questions so that you can learn these great truths from the doctor? See, I could do this part of the I can do the same thing because I, I, maybe there's more than one person in here that's going, man, I don't know if i got time to do all that. And it really is. And you go to WISE, you literally, literally go to WISE, and you click all the students who are missing, send one email. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, and really, if you just take role in WISE, then you can just click email out to the student. I mean, there's a, you'll figure out how to do that. But after you take the role, but you have to already, you can just click a button and send an absence So when you say why, is that the same way software? Right? That's the software that you'll take role on. It will make you nice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll that <laughs> So, I, uh, <coughs> I was going to say, sorry, now I'm off the train of thought. Oh yeah, and I remember. So that would count for them doing that with their parents, going through the verses and writing stuff down. That would count as a makeup. Well, sure. you heard on there I said I'd attach the student study guide. Right, right, with so, that. So I would send a link with the student study guide for the chapters that we studied. And and I'll be honest, I didn't do this every day. Sometimes I did send an email when I didn't have time. And, and I would just send an email to the parents. And, I mean, this is something you could do, but it's not the only thing you could do. The point <coughs> is that you're trying to administrate and help them out. And so to show us that. He has something to show us. Oh, well, no, no, no. I, I mean, the, the parent app, are you familiar with the parent app? No, the parent I, I app now. We're, we're out of it. Well, let me show you this then. Yeah, it's worth yeah. it. Can I just show you right there? Oh, please. So parents <laughs> have this. Um, they can excuse their son or daughter. And the next phase is that it will link to the makeup work. But I'll just show you so you all see where it is. If you go to Area directors know this stuff. Seminary.lds.org, and I'm not an area director. But, um, <laughs> so seminary.lds.org, and then if you just, right here, see this thing that says My Seminary App? If you have an Android, there's a dedicated app for it. The iPhone, it's not there yet, but it's, so I click this right here. That's right. Yeah, that's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, <coughs> let me just, <coughs> can you see my, is it just dots? It's just dots, we're just cat. Yeah. You're great. <laughs> we have so, the same password. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, it looks, it looks a lot better like on your phone, but you can just see, here's my three kids in seminary. 
and it cut off. <coughs> They're all in the same thing. Um, so here is uh, Jacob, this is my son, so it shows you his progress, wow. he's completed that, he's completed that, and then up here, seminary just started for them today, it will show right here any information if he's absent, and I used this last, because it came out at the end of last semester, as a parent, it was very slick, because they were, I could go and excuse his absence right there, but the next is, it will, if a teacher has put in, like you've said, what we taught that day, then... It wasn't there last semester, but they say there'll be a link there so the parent can click on that and their kid can do a makeup work awesome. on that too. So that's live, it's there for parents. That is so cool. Yeah, yeah. you enter your attendance into Y, it shows it right there. That is awesome. Thank you very much. But what would be your job as an administrator? Oh, great. Now I just need to enter the role. Well, tell me about the Lost Coin parents. How many of them are going to download the app? <laughs> do, you, do you see, like, this will be great for 80% of the parents, it'll be wonderful. But sometimes when these things come out, then we, think we start to feel comfortable. And we still re you reach out in every possible way. The app, emails, calls, whatever you need to do to reach. That's your, your point. Last comment. For the lost sheep people, then, would parents just be able to go, kids would say, oh, no, I got eight absences, can you go to use it? She'd go, yeah, sure, son. Isn't there a limit to how many, like, parent excused absences you can have? I think we have four or five, depending on the, on the class. They'll still have to do makeup work. Yeah, but, um, but yeah. And then they'll know, how, it sounds like it'll tell them how much makeup right. work they need there, too. And, and so the parent will know that. And, uh, yeah. There's also some other things. Um, uh, you'll have to record reading. You'll have to and help them finish their reading. You'll have to help them pass the assessment. You'll have to, all of this is things you'll have to track, know how to do, and help your students to complete. But all of it is a very important part of your job. And we just encourage you to spend the time necessary to master that part of your job and be good at it because it does make a difference. And, and uh, my prayer is, look, I mean, look around here. What if all of us were good administrators and we got one kid to come or complete seminary that wasn't going to come otherwise? Um, I, I mean, yeah, boy, I, even if we got one, if all of us went about, all of us in here went about and, and administrated just the way we're supposed to and we're very diligent about this stuff, and one kid out of all of us who was headed into inactivity, came back to the church, went on a mission, got married in the temple. I mean, that makes an, an eternal difference. And so I hope we keep that in our heart and almost consider this the missionary work part of our job to go out and find these kids and help them enroll and complete something. I, I know the Lord will bless us to be able to do that and as we can and say that name Jesus Christ. Amen. We know you're hungry. Are you kidding? <laughs> Is there snacks? There's another snack. <laughs> oh, so, well, I, I it, it's never not been there. Okay, yeah. Well, and whenever Brother Hunt steps out, like, ten yeah. minutes or the, you know. Yeah. Uh, if if yeah. there isn't, we're all better off. But if there is, enjoy, well, and we start at 2.30 and end at 3.30.